Ladies and gentlemen, Laurie Cardoza Moore with Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and we are here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. Today is our last day. We've had an amazing um, conference, convention. We talked to a lot of interesting people, and I have, of course, I'm finishing off my last interview with Harun Ibrahim, That's who right. is from Israel. He is, is, is an Israeli Arab, and he is going to talk to us to share with us where he was on October 7th. And that's who we've been speaking to, mostly Israelis here at this convention, wanting to hear firsthand to bring the message of what happened on October 7th to our audience who love Israel, love the Jewish people, want to bless them and to serve them. So. Arun, tell us about your experience. Where were you on October 7th? And tell us how it's affected you and your family. Well, um, October 7th, I was at home. I, I woke up and I was shocked by the news because the news came very, very nice. It was, I thought that maybe it's just like the so-called normal attack of one, two people. Right. But I was shocked for several reasons but the main three reasons are first how could that happen with intelligence like our country for seven hours they were in the country killing murdering raping and we are so proud and the whole country is so proud of our intelligence that even a mouse a rabbit will not come cross the border without knowing what kind of meal this rabbit had. Right. And now we had hundreds and hundreds of people coming we didn't know. Mm. That's a shock for me. The second thing is underestimated the power of evil. Mm. That is really shocking. And uh, the third thing is that the, the lack of humanity that I could see from people who want to destroy the Jewish people. Now, I am an Israeli Arab. I was born in, in Israel. I live in Israel. I was, as I told you before the filming, that uh, the first person who touched my body was the doctor that helped my mother to deliver me. He was a Jew. And uh, I studied in a Jewish school. I was treated by this government, just like equal as anybody else. I studied in a Hebrew school. Uh, I had the rights just like anybody. Right. And so now I, I don't know how could I do anything to destroy people that helped me. The other hand is my faith. I am, uh, I'm born as a Muslim. I'm an Israeli Arab Muslim family, mm -hmm. but I accepted Christ and I became a follower of Yeshua. I, yes. I consider myself mm -hmm. as a messianic. Right. And uh, I, I can't avoid it. The Bible is speaking about promises. Right. The Bible is speaking about the nation that he chose. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not only for blessings. Mm -hmm. We could see throughout the history that the Jewish people have paid a lot, a lot yes. of price Absolutely. of that mm -hmm. day that they washed their hands at the crucifixion of, of our Lord Yeshua. Well, I don't condemn anybody, but I think that even even going out of Egypt, they did some things, you know, God allowed them, allowed some things to happen, but he always had the promises that he right. gave to the fathers. Right. He did that and because of the promises of the father, for the fathers, right. God will never take his promise back. Not, God is not human That's to right. lie. That's right. Yeah, so I, I was really shocked 7th of October. I, it, it, it gave me sort of sadness uh, and we start praying. And since then, uh, I help both sides because uh, we have to remember that victims are not only from the Israeli side. Right. right. There are a lot of victims in the Gaza area people who want to live just in peace. Yes. There are actually, in Gaza, we spoke first about more than 240. Now it's 135 uh, uh, 
that are still in in capture in uh, in, in in Gaza. We we have this uh, right. yeah. release them now. The, you've got the dog tag. Uh, I think that we are wrong with the number because Hamas prisoners are more than two million. Interesting. Explain what you mean. I mean, but the, the typical the, the people, Gaza that, people, the, innocent people, right. they are captured by Hamas. So we forget that. Right. They have two million Arabs and 135 Jews captured. Right. Because, you know, Hamas has never been a liberator organization. I don't know what is that neither. I mean, how, how to call liberated, to liberate from whom? Uh, I believe that uh, the country was never, never a, 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 an independent country called Palestine. It was the Palestinian mandate that the Romans called, right. uh, Heredian called that Palestinian territories. And even, even the, the, the so-called Palestinian scholars, Islamic scholars, they were against it. They wanted to call it the Great Syria. Oh. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, Amin al Husseini, right. he wanted to call it Great Syria, not Palestine. Right. And, you know, if you go to history, 1848, right. uh, the Belarus ambassador wrote a letter to the uh, Caesar of Russia telling him that, oh, here in Jerusalem, there are 7,000 Jews, 5,000 Muslims, 4,000 Christians, 100 Europeans, 800 Turks. The letter is on the internet to, to see. Um, the soccer national team of the Palestinian mandate, 100% all the players were Jews. The jersey was blue and white. Isn't that and they played, yeah, they played seven international games. They played against Australia, Lebanon, right. Greece, Egypt, and Lebanon. Wow. I mean, the results were not really that good, but I mean, <laughs> but that, yeah. it proves that it was a country for the Jews and, right. and for the Arabs. And even the coin that was 1927, it is in Arabic, in English, and in Hebrew, Palestine in Arabic, and then Palestina in English, and in Hebrew, Palestina as well, between bars, Aleph, Yud, A, Y, A, Y or A, Eretz Israel. I have the picture of that. I will, I will give it to you. So why isn't this, you know, one of the things that we're seeing happen, not just, you know, here in the United States, but even in Israel and in the Palestinian controlled areas, the kids are not being taught an accurate, an accurate perspective of history. They're being taught the propaganda that continues to incite this hatred and this violence. I mean, one of the things that really bothered me when I was in Israel, we were filming up on a, a hillside looking down over the Balada refugee camp. And that re refugee camp has been there for generations. And they keep these people in that squalor. And the tour guides showed me some land that is part of the Palestinian controlled area, green grass. And I said, whose is that over there? He said, that belongs to the Palestinian Authority. I said, well, why don't they build a high-rise condominium or apartment buildings over there. There's plenty of room. Let these people, pull these people out of their squalor and give them some decency. Give them a home, give them work. I remember interviewing a woman from the Palestinian controlled area. She has to come through the checkpoint. And she said, if, if Israel, if, if the Palestinians have their way, and this, this company, this Jewish business is removed. This, it's a, it was a packaging plant. If they, if they lose, they shut their doors and move somewhere else. She said, me and my family will die. There is no work in the Palestinian controlled area. How do we fight this, Haroon? How do we, you know, when the people, even their own people, they keep oppressed, living in squalor. They won't give them any hope of having a decent life. How do you overcome that? Well, you're, ask, you're asking a question that is, you know, maybe a short question, but it's been for 2,000 years, uh, or at least 1,400 years since Islam came. If I have the answer, I would be the genius of the whole world. 
I don't have that, that, that wisdom, but I have uh, knowledge that could and may help. And it, I think it's, I'm sure it will. And that is people from both sides, they need to know the truth. And the Bible says that the truth sets you free. Amen. Islam is a religion of deception. It wants to wipe the history, uh, deceiving, changing history, uh, corrupt history is one of the things that the evil one would you do. You know, you're saying these things and it could cost you your life. You know this, speaking against Islam. Oh yeah, I know, but I... <laughs> but you do it. I do it because I know one thing. I believe in the Bible that I read. I mean, the Bible says that he will be with us every day. Amen. So if I don't believe it, why should I read it? The Bible says that even the hair from our head would not drop That's without right. him permission. He gave a lot of permissions on my head, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but, uh, but it's his permission. Yeah. He will keep me alive as long as I have something to say. Amen. And he will protect me. So I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm not afraid to say the truth. Uh, why should I? Uh, I don't respect cowardness, so I will not start to be a coward. Uh, and people should know the truth about the salvation. And I think, you know, the, the peace agreement that we have had in, in the past history or the latest history with Camp David, uh, Camp whatever, Oslo, all of that. Right. It is only human made peace. There is a, a peace that somebody would do, and his, his name is Sar Shalom, Amen. the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. That peace is the only peace that will make the peace between Arabs and Jews. Only through Yeshua, these two nations can be one nation, one family of God. And so I believe that it is very important that we, we, we say the truth, with love, but fearlessly. So I'm hearing talk that there are a lot of Arabs in Gaza who are actually coming, they're having dreams of seeing Yeshua. That's true. That's true. Many are accepting uh, Jesus as, as their savior. Of course, they are hiding because it cost them their life, as, yes. as, as you said. Uh, and it's not for everybody the mission to speak loud because some people are meant just to, to live as a, you know, the, the light in their family to, to, right. to preach with their life. Right. Uh, but there are, I, I hear all the day, and uh, I mean, we hear a lot of stories. Uh, I am a director of, uh, of Al Hayat channel, a channel that's preaching the gospel to the Muslim nations in Arabic. And so we hear a lot of these stories. We receive a lot of feedback from all over the Arab world, all over the world. Wow. People accepting Yeshua and Jesus as, mm -hmm. as their savior. And uh, our channel is known that we preach the gospel fearlessly, but with love. Are you threatened? Preaching Several having... times. Several times. But uh, uh, as I said, I mean, why would I have to make this a big thing? If Jesus was threatened, if he died, he was on the cross because he said the truth. Well, who am I not to do what my master did? What he was willing, yeah. So that's, that's yeah. I mean, uh, if, if I would have not be uh, threatened, I would have looked to the mirror and said, hey, what's wrong with me? Yes. Why David is not mad at me? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what they say. You know, you're you're over the bullseye when you start getting attacked. Exactly, exactly. And I really love to to share this because I love Muslims. I love Arab people. If I love somebody, I will tell him the truth. Yes. If I'm, you know, if I don't care about him, I have salvation. I have the sal I, I I got salvation through the crucifixion of Christ and His resurrection. Right. And I keep it for myself, selfish. I don't share it with anybody. Right. He will not condemn me, but I am not going to be one day called, come the faithful servant. Amen. 
I want to be that. Very well specific. done. That's right. Well done, sir. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. This is such an important issue and many Christians don't understand why there's so much hatred by the Arab population for Israel and why this battle continues. And it's so amazing to hear your story and your testimony of how God is using you, an Israeli born Arab who lives in Israel. You don't live in the Palestinian controlled area, correct? No, no, I, I actually, I live in Europe now. Okay. I am from there, but I, I travel to the country many, many times a year. Okay. Uh, I wrote, by the way, uh, my story as a, as a book. Right. It's going to be published very soon. And I, I share about that. I share about my background, my, my ministry. And uh, it is very clear that people in the country, when they hear the truth, they can be transformed into different people. Amen. Amen. So how can, how can our audience learn more about your organization? Where, they, where can they find you? They can find us in alhayat.org. It's uh, A L H A Y A T dot org. Very good. And they can go there, ask for more information, read about the information. I hope you can have that as a text uh, on the screen. And people are much welcome to, to ask us, and we will share what God is doing in the Middle East, in the Muslim world, through us and in us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you so much. So good to Lord. see you again. Good to see you. Thank too. you for coming to the NRB. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm blessed here. God bless you, sir. Thank you.